Welcome, my name is Dr. Young Cho. I'm a board certified plastic surgeon and I'm very excited to introduce a new procedure here at Integrated Aesthetics. I want to introduce Michelle, our patient today, as well as Jill, our lovely patient care coordinator. And we're going to be talking about InstaLift, which is a resorbable suture. It's bi-directional and it allows us to lift the tissues in different directions to help shape, contour, soften some of the folds typically lasts somewhere on the order of about a year and a half to two years. And these are resorbable sutures, so they do go away, but they're replaced by collagen where the sutures were placed. It just adds to our armamentarium of what we can do with facial aesthetics, especially on the non-surgical side. And this is one of those solutions that really border between surgery and non-surgical. So I'm very excited to introduce this. Michelle, if you can just quickly tell us what, what is it that you would like to achieve today? Um, my goal is to have a more defined jawline, um, just to have it more defined right here. Okay. And just a little bit lifted. Okay. So if I was to just assess Michelle, she doesn't, she has a very youthful appearance overall. She has a very soft nasolabial fold, marionette area, but this would be a great area if someone just came in for the, the folds here, that we could place a suture like this and a suture like this to further soften that. Same thing if they had more of a marionette region and had more of this a shadow right where my, my cotton tipped applicator is, then we can also place a suture here and here to pull that apart. Fortunately, Michelle has a very smooth contour to begin with, so what we can be doing is help her achieve her goal by just defining a jawline. Her jawline's well-defined, but she wants an even sharper, crisper appearance. So we're gonna be placing one suture, like here, that's gonna help pull and define this a little bit more. We're gonna be placing one suture right underneath the jawline that's gonna help anchor that even more, and that's gonna help define that crisper appearance. And what we're also gonna do is place one suture in this direction, like here, and that's gonna help directly soften some of the jowls right through here, okay? We're gonna do some markings just to help illustrate that. And we're gonna use that with the aid of our, um, with a special ruler that shows the length of the uh, resorbable sutures that we're gonna be using. I'm just gonna have you hold this gel. And like I said, so one of them, we're gonna be focusing right through here. So what I'm marking right now is where the sutures will go in where they will come out on each side. And I'm just gonna make sure that our measurements are very close to that. I'm actually gonna go just a little bit further on each side. And then I'm gonna draw little dots just to show the track of what we're trying to achieve with our sutures here. Okay, so that is one. We're gonna do a second one down here as well. And the lines show me and remind me the vectors when she lies down, the facial appearance will change slightly. So, and then I'm gonna be doing another suture. So we're gonna be doing three on each side to help contour things. So you can see how we're gonna be orienting the vectors of what we're trying to achieve. Okay, we're gonna be pulling in this direction as well as up and as well as back through there. Okay, we'll do the same thing on the other side so we can maintain some level of symmetry. What I would also just like to comment is most of us have a concept that our two sides are more like siblings rather than more like twins. So it's very common for us to have differences from one side to another. And um, so what we wanna make sure is that we work to make both sides look very natural to begin with. And if we can help them look a little more like twins, then that's only better, so.
So that's one of our vectors right there. The second one, we're moving more into this direction along the jawline. And the great thing about these sutures is that they are resorbable, meaning that uh, they do, your body absorbs them over time. They're made of materials that stimulate collagen, and that's uh, material that stimulates collagen are materials that we also use in surgery. And some of them we also use in our facial injection practice. Um, as an example, Sculptra is one product that we use uh, quite a bit in our practice to help volumize and provide more structural support to the face. And the suture material is also made of Sculptra as well. So. Okay, so if we have a quick look at our markings, what we're going to be doing is the same thing on this side where we're going to be anchoring the tissues to help further uh, define and retract the tissue in this direction, in this direction, and in this direction. And that should help achieve Michelle's goal of defining, defining a sharper jawline as well as building up and lifting the cheeks up a little bit as well. So we're going to go ahead and start prepping the face and then we're going to be draping and then we'll join back shortly. So we are back. Uh, Michelle is now prepped out. We have uh, prepped her face with some sterile solution. These are sterile towels. We're wearing sterile gloves. And what we've done is put a little bit of numbing medication along three points of each line that we had drawn out before, one in the middle, one on each end, and that's uh, a little bit on each of those uh, lines that we've created. What I have in my hands is the resorbable suture, and this is a Silhouette Insta-Lift suture. And if, if you look carefully, you can see that they are little cones on them and little knots that help secure the cone in place. I give a gentle pull to make sure that the sutures are nice and, and taut, and then we lock in the knots. And then what this allows me to do is, if I hold, give this to Jill, who's also wearing sterile gloves, and I used to use a little needle to help create an introduction site. Okay. And then through this little introduction site, we're able to pass the needles through on each side. So Jill's going to remove the needle. And then through this int introduction site, I'm going to have Jill hold the other side. We're going to able to feed the our suture in the same direction. I lift up the tissue to make sure that we're at the same level. And then We're feeding the needle through, so you can see the needle on each side. And that's about the depth that we're in right now. And then what that allows me to do through that same hole is just pull through these threads. I stop when I'm roughly at the halfway point of the mark of, this, of the suture. And that helps us to make sure that we're pulling the suture just to the mid-level as these are bi-directional. I'm going to take the other end. We're going to go through the same hole. I've got the gauze. And then we're going to go into the opposite direction. We're going just parallel to the skin and to the tissues. I'm making sure that we're at a very reasonable depth. I can feel where it's about to come out. And then I'm going to use my needles as a guide to help our needle cap as a guide to help protect ourselves so we don't poke ourselves. So again, I'm going to confirm that we're at a very reasonable depth, which we are. And then I'm going to just pull the suture through. And then together, I'm also going to pull the cones through. And now our suture's in. Okay, so that's one suture through here. We're going to go and do the same thing with the same procedure through each of those suture lines that we had drawn out beforehand. So I'm going to have Jill hold this. 
We're going to use our needle to engage the tissue, make a small little hole. I'm going to pull the tissues taut again so the knots are secure. I'm going to have Jill hold one. She's going to pull out the needle. Okay. So I'm confirming that we're at a good depth, which we are. We're just going to pull the suture through. We're at the halfway point. We'll do the same with the other side. And confirm reasonable depth where we want the sutures placed. And now they're placed. Now we've got two sutures in place. We're going to go ahead and place a third suture along the neckline as well. You doing okay, Michelle? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's come out. So we placed half the suture for the neck. I'm confirming good tissue placement. Okay. We're going to do the same for the other direction. Now this would be the same tissue plane that I would be using or identifying if I'm doing a neck lift procedure. So this is really as an alternative for someone who has mild to moderate laxity in these areas. This allows us to just help retract the tissues. and that's in a very good placement as well. So now all our sutures on the right side of Michelle are engaged. And now comes the point where we now help to soften and pull the tissue and engage the cones that we have on board. So you can see that I'm actually physically pushing some of the tissue on top of the cones, guiding the tissue and this is what creates the lift. And as the tissues are going through the, through the cones and engaging the cones, it's pulling the tissue and holding them together in a more cinched position. Okay. So that looks like it's in a very nice position. I'm just going to check one more time. And Michelle may even hear some of the tissues going, engaging onto the suture while we're doing that. As soon as we feel like the suture is in a good placement, we can just now cut them flush. And again, these sutures resorb. So the nice thing about them is that they do disappear. But in lieu of the suture, what happens is the suture itself stimulates a lot of collagen. So the collagen starts to replace the suture in its tract and helps to maintain the results that we created. So again, what I'm doing is I'm engaging some of the tissue and basically milking the tissue towards uh, to help engage the, the cones. Doing the same on the other side. And this is what helps to pull and retract the tissue in the direction that my fingers are going. The recovery period is very, very reasonable. You may have a little bit of bruising because we did put some needles underneath the tissue. You doing okay, Michelle? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
and and you will get a very nice mild to moderate degree of correction in terms of the laxity. Okay, so we are now done with one side. And then what we'll do very shortly is we'll take a quick break, we'll sit her up so we can look at one side versus another. So that's half the insta-lift procedure. So this is Michelle, we've just done half the procedure. You can see a little entry point where we put the sutures in on each side, but she got a very nice lifting and retraction of the, or contraction of the tissues in this direction, in this direction, in this direction here. She has a little bit of blanching where the numbing medication went in. The numbing medication has a little bit of epinephrine and that causes the vessels to constrict. And she may also have just a little bit of pinpoint swelling where the injection points were, which is out here and along through there. But this is a very nice result. Overall, she's described the procedure as fairly comfortable. Um, some but small times where she was a little uncomfortable, but overall very well tolerated. So we're going to get a, go ahead and start the other side. So we just finished the right side. We did our halfway point. I'm getting another suture ready. And again, this is the InstaLift suture, and it comes with these bi-directional cones, which you can see here. If I hold it up right to one of the lines as an example, and I just pull it a little bit taut, you can see how they stretch. And it's the cones that hold the tissue in place when we retract them together. I'm going to hand these to Jill. We use an introducer needle first, and this helps just to create a little small hole where the needles are placed. Okay. And Jill's going to pull out our introducer needle. And this helps us to feed the suture to where we want. We can use our needle hub to help pull the tissue out, or the needle out. I confirm placement of the suture in a good position. Okay, and we've just placed one half. We're going to go in through the same hole and we're going to go in the other direction. Confirming good placement. Okay, so now the needle's engaged as well on each side. We're just going to protect the needle so we don't hurt ourselves. And we're going to go ahead and do the next suture as well. We've got good placement of our second needle. People often ask, what do I do to help take care of this afterwards? And um, the main thing is you may feel a little bit 
of the sutra material as you're healing. That typically goes away within a, a couple weeks. Um, it could just be from local swelling where the entry points were. I would avoid anything like um, anything that makes you hot or sweaty. Very similar instructions to what we might do when we have our injectable patients so that we minimize the chance of, uh, of, of increased bruising that may occur. I would avoid anything where it requires like a vigorous facial massage until these have incorporated after a couple of year, couple, couple weeks. So if you were planning to do anything like a facial massage or getting a facial, I would probably wait a couple of weeks before you do that as well. This is a great procedure that you can do. It's in the office under sterile technique and the overall downtime is fairly minimal and it's comparable to what we might do with our facial injection practice in our patients. And Okay, so we've confirmed good placement of all of our sutures on each side. We're also one of the very first practices in the whole Houston area that is introducing InstaLift to the Houston market. It's been on in the marketplace for less than a year. It's, it is FDA approved for the procedure that we're doing. And if you do the scissors. Like we did on the other side, we're gonna recruit the tissue in the direction that we're wanting to go in, in away from where the cones are to help engage the tissue to get a little bit more of that lift. And I can feel underneath my fingers as I'm recruiting and guiding the tissues to engage onto the cones, the tissue actually moving and, and engaging the cones there. So that looks very nice. And then we'll clip the sutures. And then we'll clean her up and then we'll sit her up so we can evaluate. So we'll take a quick break here. So we had just completed the InstaLift procedure. These are resorbable bidirectional sutures. They have little cones on them which helps to hold the retracted and lifted tissue in place. These sutures do resorb, the body resorbs them and in lieu of the suture it forms collagen because of the material that the suture is made of. That helps us to retain the shape that we've just created. The results typically last somewhere between 
uh, 18 months to two years time frame. We can always add additional sutures down the road if we want to further soften or shape the face in a very specific fashion. We used a very uh, a customized uh, suture placement based on what Michelle's goals were and what her physical exam is here. So we did help to accomplish a little more definition of the jawline on each side, a little more lifting towards the cheek. Uh, it also, even though she had a very soft uh, nasal labial fold and marionette region to begin with, this is only gonna help uh, maintain that and build on that as well. She's got the same on each side. These little needle marks are gonna uh, heal within a day or so. Uh, these little blanched areas where it's a little bit whiter, that's the epinephrine again, that's gonna wear off in a few hours. So I would refrain her or caution her not to wear makeup for a good day or two until all the holes are all fully sealed so we're not introducing any makeup particles into those areas there. She can wash, use a normal skincare after that as well. So do you have any questions at all? No. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone.